So real quick, I'm not going to go into too many details here, but maybe you have sat down and started considering buying one of the new MacBook Pros because you're a mobile application engineer. Maybe you work with Flutter. Maybe you work with uh, cross-compiling engine. Um, what is that? React Native. Maybe you're a back-end engineer and you run a lot of Docker containers. Or maybe you do all of the above like myself. I write iOS and Android. I love building... Um, Applications built in uh, Kotlin. Kotlin is my favorite programming language. Um, I really enjoy Python, and I use a lot of Docker containers. But professionally, what I'm getting to is that I'm a mobile application engineer. I build apps, and I've done that now for 10 years. I've done it since the beginning. I have released many applications for Fortune 500 companies and many dozens of personal projects as well. And that's not about me. Today is about you and making the decision about whether or not you should upgrade. So my personal experience has been this. My day-to-day -day work laptop is an i9 fully spec'd. It is 2019. It is very recent hardware. This is a great machine on paper. But in reality, I have been conditioned to, to suffer. This, this machine, when I run it in my lap, doesn't work for more than three hours. It will literally burn my lap and run out of juice within, like I said, three hours. If I even think about opening Zoom and an Android emulator simultaneously, the fans will kick on to full speed. So this entire time, the past two years I've owned this, I have been conditioned by the noise. I have been conditioned by the heat. Luckily, the keyboard on this one has been upgraded, so I, I haven't had to deal with the terrible uh, uh, butterfly keyboard issues, at least on this machine. My personal machine is still butterfly, and that is one of the other reasons why I decided to update. So, getting from my personal work machine, or my actual, actual work machine, this has 64 gigs of RAM and um, on a daily basis, looking at the activity monitor, I can see that I'm using about 44 with my workload, uh, workflow. I think that's what all the creatives are calling it. Um, and, and yeah, so I decided to give the new one a shot because battery and heat, at least from my work perspective. From my personal perspective, I love the portability of the 13. The 13 still holds true to my heart. I love being able to carry this with me anywhere and do uh, what I do on the go, while I'm camping, on a plane, doesn't matter. But again, I'm dealing with heat. This one has the i7 in it and it's got, I think, 16 gigs of RAM. So it's not like fully spec or anything like that, but it's 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 a good machine at 2018, but it has the Bluetooth, uh, the, the, the butterfly keyboard. So if you're coming from the butterfly keyboard, you're gonna notice an absolute amazing difference. It's typing, the typing experience on the new one is, is absolutely incredible. I love not having the touch bar anymore. I love that the escape key is, is massive. I love that there's a dedicated function row. And the other thing that I love is that when I have a bunch of simulators, emulators, containers, servers, all these different things running and I close the lid, and I open it two hours later, it's still at the same battery percentage. That didn't happen on these. I don't know why, but like I'd close it, and if I left an emulator running, it would be dead when I opened up it again. This one, no, it's just still, still at 17%, which is where I left it a few hours ago. Uh, the other nice thing that I noticed is when I open the lid on the new one, it's just on, like, on this guy, for some reason, I don't know if this is just because I've installed a bunch of hard software stuff on it, I have to re restart the machine every day or else when I go to open the lid, I it struggles to wake, very much struggles to wake. Um, yeah, so from a personal perspective and a work perspective, you can see where I was kind of coming from. I had the butterfly experience um, and I didn't like how fast I was running out of battery on both, and both of them suffered tremendously from heat. Like, I, I'd have to put a pillow in my lap just to use either one of these as a laptop. And I definitely had to make sure that I had a power source when I was on the go, because 
the you know battery anxiety was very much a thing with these. Uh, I like to fly Southwest. Southwest is my favorite airliner, mainly because I worked on their app. But the, a lot of times they don't have an outlet on their airplanes, and on a three-hour flight, I usually land and my machine is dead, which stinks because I just spent eight bucks on Wi-Fi and have been connected and like all these kind of things. So I'm like well, what can I turn off in order to maximize my battery? Should I put it in airplane mode? Should I, should I like, I don't know, not run a simulator? Like, should I just plug in a, a physical device so that I can test on that? That way the battery for the device is actually on the device. Like all these different like things are playing in my head just to make sure that I can get through a flight and maximize my workflow. When instead, really all I should have done is just bought one of these. I have had this machine now for 24 hours, which is not saying a whole lot. But yesterday I made the choice to not plug this thing in until it was completely dead. Um, I like to run the battery all the way down to zero on the first cycle just to get a, a first off understanding of what to expect from the battery moving forward. But I think it's also good for the, the battery itself to cycle completely every once in a while because that's good for it to indicate where, where it needs to go to charge back up. Um, I don't know if that's actually like scientific or whatever, but that's just my personal preference. I'm at 17% battery now. I have now downloaded Xcode. I have downloaded all Android, all of the different SDKs. I have cached locally on the machine 2,000 songs on the highest quality setting through Spotify. I have uh, created several simulators, both iOS and Android. I have spooled up several Docker containers, lots of Python installations, a lot of homebrew installations, uh, set up uh, ZS, ZHS, ZSH for my terminal. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm thinking that I have at least touched 100 gigs of networking data on this thing, and I did it all while on battery. I mean, that's absolutely insane. The, uh, to, to pull down that much stuff over an internet connection, a wireless internet connection, and do that and still not have a dead laptop is absolutely insane. Like this morning I woke up at 4 a.m. before the rest of my family got up. That's what I typically do for my personal project. And I got my servers running. I got the uh, Flutter app compiling on both iOS and Android, just like do some random tests just to make sure it's working. I ran unit tests, like everything's working great now that I got it all set up properly. You do need to make sure that you use the ARM64 uh, JVM if you're going to be doing any kind of JVM related work, else you're going to see a lot of really bad lag. But yeah, other than that, like, it's been absolutely such a, a pleasant experience. Like it, it sits in my lap, it sat on my lap all morning long and never once got warm. Like it, it was, it, I, again, not scientific, literally burning my lap. These would burn my lap and I'd have to use a pillow. This morning I was wearing sweatpants and had this in my lap and never once felt uncomfortable. And they were like, oh, Oh, I need to put up. I need to put up something in between this so that I'm not getting burned. I'm not on. I'm on battery the entire time, and everything is just so snappy. Like, like I said, I've got. I had an iOS, iOS emulator open, Android emulator, servers, integration tests, like through Postman, uh, many many Chrome tabs, mostly on Stack Overflow, um, just like. So many things that would cripple either one of these machines and kick the fans on. I didn't even hear a fan this morning on this new one. Like it's, I'm so very happy that I purchased this and I'm going to be using it moving forward. I'm so sad about losing the form factor of the 13, but honestly, now that I've kind of like really walked around the house with this and used it as a laptop, I'm also very excited about this green real estate. I'm in my mid thirties now, so I'm not cranking down the resolution like I used to. So it's really nice to be able to run an IDE with multiple coding windows in it. So the extra real estate has been really nice. Uh, you might've been wondering about the, the notch. I haven't noticed the notch once. I don't run in full screen mode. I don't like do, sometimes I do multiple desktops, just kind of depends. But most of the time I'm on 
one desktop and just command tab through everything or I use um, um, I use Alfred also for opening and closing a lot of things um, and my workflow this morning was just absolutely pleasant like I just got down to coding it was so nice just to open touch ID was super fast and go oh again like I was listening to music this morning listening to music this morning was so pleasant as well like be having the function keys being able to skip through songs and not like try and expand that touch bar and like go to different songs and stuff. And then like the IDE that I use, IntelliJ has like all these like helper things up front. Like I never use that. I'm always using keyboard shortcuts like control R to compile or uh, for Android, I'll use, uh, I set up a uh, ADB idea for, for, you know, restarting the app and clearing all the session information. Like there's all these different like key combinations that I use. And I'm so glad to have the function keys back so I can map a couple more things that I w was missing. And the escape key is nice and big so you can just slam it. It's no longer this thing that you're fishing for. Like it's just nice how everything has been laid out. So all in all, I'm very happy with it. It was a very expensive move. I I definitely like cried when I did it, but um, in general, like I'm just very happy. I think this is, if you are a mobile application engineer or full stack engineer that is using a lot of memory, um, and building a lot of different products simultaneously, um, then this is definitely the upgrade to make this year. I definitely consider it. Like I, I went from an i9 to this and noticed a huge improvement, not only in performance, but heat and battery performance as well. Um, also coming from a 13 inch 2018 that is pretty well specced as well. Again, just night and day difference. It's, it's, there's no question whatsoever. So uh, if you like this video, make sure you take the time to thumb, thumb up, whatever everyone does on, on YouTube. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. Um, I can definitely go into more detail on any one of these aspects if you'd like. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for your time, guys.